So recently I've gotten some requests to do a trailer video and today is the day. I believe the SnowRunner community seems very divided on this topic and I would like to just stir the pot just a little bit more. No man, I'm just kidding, but I do genuinely wish to give players my honest thoughts and then allow them to choose their own setups that best suit their own gameplay style. So today in this video, our outline is as follows. We will look at the trailers as an overview and I will include scouts as well. And then number two, we will talk about what is the so-called meta and why. And then lastly, in the last two parts, I will do a hitch trailers versus saddled trailers, pros and cons. And then I'll give you my closing thoughts on what I feel about number four, which is those hitch trailers versus those saddled trailers. So without further ado guys, let's jump into this. And check it out okay so we have a few trucks out here for your viewing i have the lodestar 1700 the voron d 53233 the dan 96320 and the paystar 5070 over there at the far back and first we're going to take a look here at the scout trailers and as you can see i'm just holding my controller right now um if you hear my controller bump anything uh, i apologize for that you hear me pause um all that other good stuff i am doing this on a one take basis anyways let's continue so here's the scout bed flat the scout flatbed this is uh came with the original part of the game um, not really much to it uh, because since they get brought out this off-road scout trailer i believe this one is better as well uh, but i would be careful about what scouts you do choose to pull trailers with because of just power and grip and they don't have a lot of weight in them however the lodestar here pretty much treats these trailers like they're not even behind it and if it does notice them, it's very, very minimal. Okay, let's move on. You can carry two slots of cargo with the Scout flatbed, as it says here uh, in the descriptions of each of these. And then there's the smaller Scout flatbed. You can haul single pieces of cargo for those lighter Scouts if you choose to do so. You also can load other Scouts on here or other trucks to tie them down, etc. But that's something, like I said, I probably wouldn't do. The Proto Exploration Unit, this is something I've used a lot in uh, on my challenge mode, which is actually on my YouTube. I used to pull this around with the Hummer to uh, unlock a lot of areas. You get this in phase one. Uh, I wouldn't say much about it. It has its own fuel tank in it that it basically is a watchtower in itself. So you can use this at your leisure or just drive around so it doesn't really matter. So we'll just continue here. And then we have the Scout Fuel Trailer, which is really one of my favorites of all these trailers here, just because, well, it gives you that extra mileage, that extra boost to um, your range. And I especially use it with uh, this truck you see sitting here, because the Lodestar 1 doesn't have the largest tank, and also it burns a pretty good amount of fuel because it does have a truck engine, a truck gearbox, and also truck tires. It doesn't have Scout tires. So um, to keep this thing going for long distances, I usually pull this around because it usually doesn't affect its performance uh, in much in many ways. So um, that is what I do. Anyways, these are the scout trailers. I know I didn't really go through those a lot in detail because, well, I don't think you should be using these scout trailers in a lot of scenarios that you should be pulling cargo with the larger trucks. And that's when I'm gonna switch over here. And we're gonna take a look at these trucks that you should be hauling cargo with and first one is the Voron here and I have this set up with the uh, the crane and the, sh the, the bed combo and the reason I chose this truck I will talk about this in a little bit here as you can see there's a couple options here you have the ramp flatbed uh, this is multi-purpose so you can load vehicles on here as many as you can pack on here and actually get them to pack on your truck you can do so a um, couple downsides about it is you can get snagged up on trees and stuff like that when you're going through tight areas with these um, these ramps here. These do activate whenever you have your engine on, so you can put them down, put them up. Usually you have them in the up position where you're traversing uh, around, around stuff, but overall this is usually what people use if they're not using a modded trailer or anything like that because this allows you to get six pieces of cargo, two in your bed, four here, or you can transport vehicles like I said um, so there is that option the next one is the fuel carrier these you've probably seen these around you can pick these up you can use these as a, a fuel carrier to pull these around to support other vehicles um, 
not too much big of a deal here uh, pretty standard trailer I would watch out for its balance because well it's a, a fuel carrier and it will tip you over or it can so there is always that potential um, any support truck any support type of add-on they do have that weight that's up top so that is just something to keep on your radar when you're driving next is the medium log trailer um, I really don't use this much since the um, the add-ons came out for your actual frame but if you wanted to load two pieces of um, cargo uh, medium logs you can use this and then have another set on your truck and deliver two sets but um, these things are very hard to use because well when you put logs on a vehicle or you put logs on a trailer they do become tippy because like I said the weight imbalance just kind of throws off when you're going over those harsh areas moving on the generator trailer uh, you use this in some areas to craft cargo you can notice that it has the double axles in the front also has the longer tongue here and I'm going to talk about this in a little bit of detail whenever we move down this list but anyways not too much here um, there's not many areas you're gonna drag this through uh, that you're not really it's not really that big of a deal so I didn't feel I need to cover that in detail next we have um, here's actually a, a hitch trailer which is um, the long log carrier you'd have to have the long log front set up on here and to carry the long logs but other than that it's really not that big of a deal this is something that you're just gonna have to use um, long logs can be pretty tough but they do kind of act like a um, a saddled trailer just because that's kind of how they're set up um, because the log front is on your actual frame so you're gaining that that stability from turning and stuff like that and also you're gaining traction uh, from the weight being on your wheels okay moving on to so here's a normal setup that most people use here is a sideboard bed trailer and the reason I chose this truck now I'm gonna get to what I was talking about before because as you can see there's not a big space here between the actual sideboard bed and then the sideboard bed trailer and this can be an issue whenever you're turning or whenever you're trying to back this trailer out or something like that you'll have these collisions here and this is not really fun so some of these trucks that you want to use this uh, combo with the crane the flatbed or the sideboard bed and then with in conjunction with this trailer sometimes you'll have this happen here and my solution for this, I believe, is using this trailer right here. Now you can see it has the, the double axles in the front. This gives you a little bit more balance. Uh, it's actually a little bit lower too as well. And then also you do have these little rails on the side. So if you do tip this trailer over, over, um, it does kind of keep your cargo in to a degree unless it slips through these cracks. So it's kind of like the sideboard bed, um, sometimes Things will just fall out of the sideboard bed. Sometimes they'll fall out of this flatbed trailer. But overall, it has a longer tongue. So as you can see, um, maneuvering will not be an issue. And I also like how it has the double axles in the front and back. Um, I think it's probably a little bit more of a heavy trailer. So this would probably be my pick. But I have used the other one um, a lot. And I just think this one is probably going to get the nod for me. Okay, moving on. This is just the maintenance trailer. Um, nothing too big single axles on the front and back uh, basically it's just a, a lot of weight to pull behind you especially because well it has fuel and repair points just like the fuel carrier trailer as well it has the same amount of gallons as the, um, the hitch trailer let me go up here I'll show you so it has 529 gallons so instead of just buying this your best bet is to actually buy um, this trailer here so, okay, so now we are going to move on and talk about the saddled trailers now, so let's get to it. Okay, for the saddled trailers here, as you can see, I have the Dan 96320 sitting in front of me. It is jacked up with its um, suspension. I have it in the raised position here, and um, we're going to talk about some high saddle trailers. The first one is going to be the wide bed semi-trailer, and this is one a lot of people like. Uh, because it can carry five slots of cargo as you can see it is a wide bed um, a couple things I see wrong with it and a couple things I see right with it first things I see wrong with it it's wide so getting through some of those tighter areas um, is gonna pose issues um, but that is also going to depend on your tolerance for 
uh, this trailer as well and just overall using the high saddle um, some good things about it is let me actually back the screen to a third person view as you can see there's not a lot to get snagged up on especially up here you can see the outriggers are actually tucked up pretty good in here if you have good clearance on your truck you can see it's kind of slanting down a little bit and that's because I have this suspension um, in the upright position so if you have good clearance on your truck you're probably gonna have good clearance on this vehicle or on this trailer as well and then this flat space right here this is usually where you're gonna contact uh, terrain when you're going over bumps and stuff like that and back here yes you could get snagged on things um, logs rocks um, but those are kind of few and far between so I wouldn't necessarily worry about that but overall bad things you can get snagged up um, going through those smaller areas but you can carry five slots of cargo and I believe you can pack um, a small scout up here on this little step deck part as well so that's a pretty cool thing okay next let's talk about the super heavy semi trailer this is an eight slot trailer um, you don't necessarily see me using this a lot it has this step deck up here as well that you can put stuff on and then eight slots to put cargo uh, down on its bed um, the bad things about this is well it is super long as you can see it's basically the length of my whole screen here uh, I'm in third person view there we go I backed out a uh, ton of tires there are things to get snagged up on especially down here uh, you, you'll get snagged up um, but I don't think that's the main concern the main concern is just taking corners and trying to maneuver this into tight situations I would say a good maps to use this on would probably be Michigan, Alaska, and any map that's open where you have scouted out a designated route where you know that you're not going to be in a tight situation or there's a lot of cargo and this trailer is definitely um, worth doing that. So anyways, that is the super heavy. Okay, moving on. All right, so we have the heavy duty low boy here. The heavy duty low boy, a um, couple things about it is it has um, this arch that comes up and sits right over your wheels, which is nice because it is a pretty heavy trailer. Four axles in the back, um, ramp that, that slides down. So you can get some big, uh, some big vehicles up on this, like the Kolobs and stuff like that. And you've seen those on my videos. Um, however, because it's heavy in nature, and if you are planning on putting a heavy truck up on this thing to tow it, I would recommend having a very heavy, powerful truck to tow this um, because you can get quickly overwhelmed with how much weight this thing can hold and how much weight can actually just uh, negatively affect your, your vehicle. So keep that in mind. Other than that, um, a few things about it. Um, I don't like how it kind of sits very low here and this outrigger can catch on things. Other than that, um, if you can clear this, you do hit your wheels on things and you'll actually be able to roll over them. So that's actually not too bad of a thing. It's a very wide trailer, as you can see. So balance is really not an issue. I would say the truck that's packed on it, um, if you're going over bumpy terrain, just be prepared for it to come unpacked and turn over. So uh, yeah, that's just the nature of towing, towing vehicles on trailers. So, okay, let's move on here. Okay, and I believe that is all the high saddle trailers that I uh, have here on the list. Next, we're going to jump over to the Paystar 5070 and talk about the low saddle trailers. Here we go. So as you can see, here is my Paystar, and this is something that I've used um, a lot. This setup right here, low saddle and the crane. Um, if you've watched any of my videos, um, even my live streams, this is essentially what I use exclusively, and I'll talk about that a little bit later in some detail uh, when I give my closing thoughts. But anyways, let's jump in here and talk about these trailers. So first is the Step Deck Semi Trailer. This is this is kind of like a sleeper, in my opinion. Um, well, because you have your five slots that can sit really low on the trailer. Then up here, you can throw a Scout, pack the Scout down, or even you can put a small Scout fuel trailer up here and pack it. And then what you have is, is you have fuel and you have repair points if you have a scout and you just have fuel if you have that trailer. But all your cargo sits down here and you have this space to utilize um, some type of support feature so you don't have to really worry about fuel um, repairing and all other stuff if you choose to do so, which is really, really awesome. Some good things and some bad things about the step deck is, well, 
the step deck, um, the first thing that I think is really good is the outriggers here are kind of almost tucked up flush with this frame here, so you won't have a ton of snagging when you're going over stuff, and if you do really touch terrain, it's just going to glide by here, and then it kind of slopes up to the wheels, and then if it hits your wheels, well, it just rolls over, and then if by some chance that you're like a, a log or something like that gets caught here on the aft end uh, of this frame, it happens sometimes, it's very few and far between, but it can happen. If that happens, just back up and then pull forward again and you'll actually, the log will release. So step deck is really good. Um, some bad things are, um, well, it's very long. So maneuverability is gonna be an issue because all your cargo is down here. And basically this is the size of a sideboard semi-trailer, but this part is actually up here um, instead of the step deck part. Um, so another thing is you need to keep in consideration is the length from the front of the step deck up to where the cab or even the crane is because whenever you're maneuvering these things you're kind of jackknifing them and then you're turning out of it so uh that's something that you want to keep your eye on whenever you're you know jumping in a truck out of a truck and picking up trailers is take a look real quick before you set off if you can jackknife this thing and, and make complete turns so if you can that's wonderful if you can't you might want to think about using a different trailer or even a different truck so um, step deck's pretty nice. It is kind of wide as well, so that's just going to have to be something that you're just keeping in your um, in your cross check whenever you're you know running around with stuff. Okay, cool. Let's move on here. Okay, the gooseneck. I don't have really much to say about the gooseneck, and for good reason because well, it has a gooseneck, comes up, sits on on your trailer, transfers all the weight to your wheels, gives you traction, etc. Yet, here's the problem. Step deck is another step deck. The gooseneck is very, very low, a low sitting trailer. It does have these runners here that are even farther down. I wish they could, these could fold up, but it's just the, the game. You cannot do that. So you will um, have these dragging through the mud. So when something is dragging through the mud, it creates resistance against the vehicle's forward movement. And that is not necessarily a good thing. Um, also, you can get caught up here because it's still so low. So um, logs and stuff can get caught in this back part or when you're going through the woods or any type of wooded areas or such or making a sharp turn or you might just clip something with these and get hung up. So that can happen. Um, I did mention that before, but anyways, it also can only carry four pieces of cargo opposed to carrying five like the step deck or even the, um, the sideboard semi trailer. So we will move on here. If you do like the gooseneck, um, more power to you, but it's just not something I think I'm going to use. Okay, so we have the flatbed semi-trailer, and then we also have the sideboard semi-trailer. And they're basically the same thing, um, other than, well, <laughs> the, the flatbed doesn't have the sideboard, which can protect you from cargo sliding out if it comes unpacked from an unusual attitude. So that's why I personally use this setup here. Um, if you use the other one, that's it's fine. It's totally fine. It's just your games, your gameplay style is your gameplay style. Anyways, some bad things. Um, the outriggers sit pretty far low. You have these toolboxes here, which don't have any repair points or any fuel. Very, very sad. And then you have these little steps here that come down or these like rails and they can get snagged on stuff. Um, I haven't found it to be too much of a big deal. I do have a lot of time. Um, hauling cargo with this exact trailer here um, and I'll talk about that later with my times and hitch trailers opposed to um, saddled trailers when I talk about that but another thing I did find is I do snag on some logs whenever you're in deep conditions back here when this gets caught uh, it is few and far between like I've said before but it can happen so really good things about this it is it is kind of a shorter trailer than the step deck is and also you can um, throw logs and stuff in here. I've been able to throw a ton of logs in here and stack them um, really tight and use that to deliver and then unpack, basically take them out with a log crane. So, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm just clearing my throat. Anyways, I think this is really good, especially for st over stacking cargo because you have this front here that stops cargo from flying forward. Um, I think this is huge. This has actually saved me <laughs> a couple times going downhill where cargo has slid forward and actually contacted that. But anyways, I'm gonna move on here. Let me switch this time back to daylight. Okay. Really good trailers right there, in my opinion. 
Okay, so the fuel carrier semi-trailer, I don't use this a lot. You probably haven't seen me use this a lot at all. Um, I do really like it because while it has 978 gallons, um, all that all that weight is benefited, transferred through your wheels, gives you grip, etc. A um, couple bad things about it, you do have this, those outriggers that um, the legs that extend down, this can get caught, um, this can get caught here, and then you probably don't have much back here that gets caught. Um, there's a reason I really don't use these. If they are on a map and I can pick them up, I will do so and actually have a designated saddle truck to go be my fuel, um, fuel support truck. And I have done that before, but if it's not currently on the map in a hard mode setting, I won't actually use my own money to purchase this. Um, just because I'm looking for free fuel and if I'm buying one of these trucks to fill up just to run around um, and have a saddled fuel carrier, I don't think it's worth it, especially the monetary value of it. But I do really like these these trailers. They do ride really, really well, especially with the three axles in the back. Um, so, yep. And then, moving on. I believe that is it. That is the last trailer of the low saddles. So now we are going to jump and I'm going to talk about the controversy and then of, you know, the saddled trailer versus hitch trailer thing. And then I'm going to give you guys my pros and cons on both and then we'll get into the conclusion. So let's get into it. So upon browsing on Reddit or even on the internet, any type of YouTube videos and such like that, I've come across the word meta, which I've only ever seen in competitive gameplay games. And when it comes to SnowRunner, I found it kind of silly. But overall, um, when I did see it, it was mentioning trailers and someone said, this is the meta. And what I think the meta is currently in SnowRunner is the sideboard bed um, crane with a hitch trailer. And why is it, why is that the meta? Well, I believe it's the meta because more voices have been saying it louder. And also, I think it's just been on Reddit, and also large YouTubers have been promoting it as well, and I don't think that is necessarily correct. And I don't mean to create any type of controversy, I just genuinely want to give you my overall gameplay, my research, and what I've found. And with that being said, we're going to get in here and talk about the Hitch Trailer's pros and cons versus the Saddle Trailer's pros and cons. So, let's get after it. Okay, so in this segment, we're going to talk about hitch trailers in total. We're going to do the pros and the cons, starting with the cons first of hitch trailers, and then we'll move on and talk about the saddled trailers, pros and cons, always starting with the bad news. So here we go. Uh, downside number one um, is going to be loading trailers. Now, as you can see, I have this uh, ramp flatbed here, holds four pieces of cargo. And an issue I do have with this is um, on hardcore mode, you're usually manual, manually loading your vehicle unless you decide to pay for it. Um, if you're not on hardcore, this is not a big deal. You just auto load it, etc. But this is more of a hardcore thing. Um, or even if you tip your, your vehicle over and you lose all your cargo, um, loading your vehicle from your own vehicle with your crane you really can't project the cargo back here unless you get it back here, drop it, and it somehow rolls onto the cargo bed here, and then you pack it. So I felt that was a downside because you either have to detach, um, park alongside of it, and then load your vehicle um, opposed to um, the saddle trailers. So moving on to number two, it is pulling weight. Now this is something I did explain with my video um, with max power called mud running tips if you haven't seen it go check it out it explains this a little bit more in detail but overall the uh, weight that is not directly on your axles is considered pulling weight so everything here that's connected from the saddle and back um, all this weight is going to be pulling weight which is affecting your vehicle's traction um, you have to pull it it's not directly on top of you giving you traction from weight on wheels etc so go check out that video but that is a downside for number two. Number three is going to be balance. Um, overall, these trailers, they can tip over. And if they do tip over, um, sometimes they tip your own truck over. And sometimes they don't. But overall, the balance is just, um, yeah, you can tip these things over. And I just wanted to mention that because 
This vehicle here is totally separate entity than this, this trailer here, and it's just connected by a hitch, so you can't really control much of the balance uh, just from your own winching and your own vehicle's balance, so this is kind of separate, and you kind of have to always be looking back to kind of juggle that, so I did feel that was a downside, and I will elaborate on this a little bit more when we talk about saddled trailers. Um, next, I'm going to talk about snagging. And this can kind of go with both um, the saddled and the hitch trailers. Here, in this case, um, with these little runners here in the back, they can get snagged up on stuff. You can get snagged um, from things on the trailer underneath. But that is the nature of all trailers in general. But it is a downside. I just wanted to put it on there. Um, number five is going to be maneuverability and backing. And I'm going to switch trailers here just so to give you guys a little bit more of uh, an example as well. Um, I mentioned this a little bit before, but um, saddled or not saddled hitch trailers here, they are extremely hard to back. And another thing is, if you have this trailer with a truck that has an extended bed that comes back that can hook this up, you don't have much room to turn. And jackknifing them can flip the truck, it can flip the trailer. Um, just overall maneuverability of hitch trailers, it's not fun. Um, I have a significant amount of time backing them, using them, and uh, versus saddled trailers, and I've found that saddled trailers just do a lot better. But I'm going to leave it at that. And now we're going to talk about the pros for hitch trailers. Now let me go back to that goose, that rim flatbed. If I can sell this one first. All right, looks good. Cool. All right, now onto the pros. So. A pro about using hitch trailers opposed to saddle trailers, um, and I'm necessarily speaking about low boys, I mean the low saddle trailers, uh, the hitch trailers can use more cargo, simply. Simply put, um, saddle trailers can use like five slots of cargo unless you're using that super heavy eight slot one, which you don't necessarily use all the time unless you really want to impose uh, some hardship on yourself. And you can use six pieces of cargo here so you put four on here two on here and you're moving six pieces opposed to a saddle trailer moving five pieces so that is an upside there number two uh the trailer detached and the truck is still viable so if i detach this um trailer and left it i still can use this setup as such and move cargo i can go pick up small scouts you know other things and throw them in this bed um to move around now if you're using a saddled trailer like this, there's not much you can do with this this vehicle when the saddle's gone and you don't have a trailer there. So that is a, a really big upside is this truck is still viable um, and it's configured in a way to be still useful opposed to the saddled uh, setup. And then finally, at number three, and I, I did kind of put this as a downside, but this can be an upside if you tip this trailer back here Sometimes it does not affect your weights and tip you over, which is a very good thing because you are not, you definitely are two separate, um, your weights are just two separate things. Um, your weight is one thing, this weight is another thing. So if this flips, sometimes it doesn't flip you over, sometimes it does. It's kind of a roll of the dice in a certain situation, it will. I've had both happen, but whenever it tips separately, all you really have to do is upright it and put the put the cargo back on it if you have cargo and then just continue so those are the pros and cons for hitch trailers guys we're going to jump over here to the paystar 5070 and talk about saddled trailers pros and cons starting with the cons okay so here is the saddled trailers portion we're going to talk about the cons first and uh, i'm going to actually put a trailer on here and then we'll briefly go through these i'm trying to take up too much time here but anyways let's let's here we go um, first off, con number one, uh, it is less cargo than the hitch trailer. So you can do five pieces of cargo here, with the exception of using the eight slot, which not many people use the eight slot. So you're going to have one piece of less cargo, so not as much cargo can be moved in one, uh, one pull. Number two, um, it does seem kind of daunting. It does take some practice to use these. Um, I put this on here because I used hitch trailers for an extensive hours, which I'll tell you guys later in the conclusion. Um, 
and it did seem daunting whenever I was going to use saddle trailers and it does take some practice to use them so I did feel that was a downside. Number three is just regular old snagging. Um, doesn't really matter what trailer you have, um, you might have snags, you might not, but in some cases you're going to get some snags on most trailers in this game, that's just how they're made, unless you're using some type of mod, but that definitely is a downside. Downside number four um, is the trailer will influence your tipping more often than it won't. So I threw this one in here because this can um, affect your balance because this trailer here is directly connected to your vehicle's balance. Now your vehicle does affect its balance from your vehicle's characteristics, but when you have weight on here and the weight gets upset, you're connected from a saddle. And if this goes, you're most likely, likely going to go unless you can detach in time and save yourself. or. Um, the quick winch can save you, um, which that's that's what I do, but we'll talk about that in the pros. But just know that your weight here is all connected. Um, you are one entity, not two, so it does affect the influence of your, your balance. So let's move on to the pros here. Um, the pros I find, number one, is cargo loading. Um, something I love to do, and if you watch my streams, you'll just see I fling cargo into this this bed here really quickly, and then I rapidly hit pack. And I do that, I just throw um, one piece of cargo, it'll pack in slot number one, I'll throw another piece of cargo around top of slot number one, pack it, it'll go to slot number two, and then move it all the way back. The only piece of cargo that I do have to manually un... Um, I think it's unlock or unpack and then push it back with my actual crane is the uh, cargo containers. And that's really the only one. I just push it back and then I'll throw the piece of cargo in here and pack them both. Not really a big deal, but over the saddle trailers, this is much more efficient. Uh, I like it a lot more. So I did feel that was an upside. Number two, maneuverability and backing. Uh, these vehicles and these trailers are very easy to jackknife and then pull out of it. In all these little tough, situations these smaller areas it's almost like you would think the hitch trailers would be better because you can turn sharper and around things but actually the saddled trailers are so much more maneuverable in those tight situations because you can jackknife this trailer and then quickly turn out of it um, it's just been amazing uh, for maneuverability in that sense uh, I don't really have any uh, uh, what's it called examples to show you but if you watch any of my streams or anything like that uh, I will get back to streaming very very soon and when I do just ask me to, to do a demonstration I will show you but um, just take my word for it it's very easy to turn out of things and the maneuverability and backing uh, a hitch trailer is much more difficult than backing a saddled trailer okay next is a huge one here and this is just weight on wheels now we talked a little bit about pulling weights and we talked a little bit about carrying weights so all this weight that goes inside this truck is considered carrying weight because it's all transferred right here through the the saddle so this vehicle is gaining traction from this weight being in here and huge examples of this if you watch my previous streams with max power on our all-american hardcore mode i am using the western star 49x it does not have all-wheel drive um, for the most part and then um, it has highway tires and what I was doing was I was activating differential locking with weights in the back and I was getting enough traction from that weight being pushed down on those wheels to go through that snow and that mud and stuff like that so um, that is an example just to prove that to you but anyways we will move on but just keep in mind that whenever you're pulling a hitch trailer you are pulling weight it's going to negatively affect the movement of your vehicle because, well, you're pulling pieces of cargo. In this, you have carrying weight sitting on top of your axles. Okay, so, number four, uh, it's going to be better balance overall. And now I did say in the cons that this trailer can influence your tipping. And in, from just looking at these things, you would think, wow. Uh, that seems like it's going to tip over very easily, but if you ever watch my streams, I keep saying this over and over, um, if you can bend, whenever you have an angle from your truck and your trailer, 
your truck and your trailer can help aid each other's balance. And it kind of works in this tandem way. It's kind of really weird to explain. Um, usually every time I play or stream, I usually talk about this in some sense. But let's say you're going down a hill with a truck and this hitch or this saddle trailer here, and you make a sharp right turn. Well, if you had a sideboard bed and you make that sharp right turn going down a steep hill, you're pretty much guaranteed to flip over. However, because you have all this weight attached to your hitch, it's keeping you on your wheels when you turn through that. And it's kind of hard to reiterate, kind of hard to show you here. I don't have any examples, but if you catch me on the stream, I definitely um, will show you this. And another thing is, um, if you have a very stable vehicle, like let's say the Tega 6436, the Tega 6436 has very low center of gravity, so it also helps the trailer's balance because the Tega is so um, so stable, so it, it helps. So kind of like, and then sometimes these tippy trucks like this one I have right here, this does not have the um, raised suspension on it because, well, when you put even when you put the crane on it, it becomes tippy, so the raised suspension makes it even worse. So to counteract this, I feel safe actually using a trailer with this because you can kind of use the trailer as a counterbalance. And um, yeah, like I said before, if you catch me on stream, I will definitely explain this, try to give you good examples of it, but this is stuff that I've found through my testing. So in conclusion, there are a lot of voices out there from web pages to Reddit blogs to even large YouTubers saying that, well, the crane, sideboard bed, and trailer combo is the best you can use and if a truck doesn't have it it's a huge downside deal breaker and I am just so against that logic um, as you can see I did bring a lot of pros and cons with both the hitch trailers and the saddle trailers and I do prefer the saddle trailers like I've said I have 834 hours of gameplay moving cargo with hitch trailers alone um, it wasn't all just 834 hours just moving hitch trailers with cargo. Um, I did do other things. However, ever since that game file was deleted when I started anew, the rest of my 2100 total hours in the game was all with saddled trailers. And I'm just giving you my thoughts. However, even though I have a platform to speak on, I'm not necessarily, that doesn't necessarily give me the right um, to have you just outright believe me. And what I wanted to do is just make you think. Even if you were a guy who likes the hitch trailer setup, I just want to make you think and maybe perhaps change your perspective on the other um, school of thought. So anyways, guys, I hope this video really helped you out. I hope it opened your eyes to a little bit different perspective of both the hitch trailers and saddle trailers as well. And uh, if you like the video, please give it a like, subscribe. And until next time, guys, stay upright and God bless.